So then we come to this one, um, a non-branded packet. And this, to me, feels like a cloned Nagoya 77771. Oh, very tight to get in, just bear with me. There we go, ripped it in the end. So yeah, this uh, <laughs> yeah, let me let me just go I've got I've got a Nago, I've got a clone to go. Let me just go and get a uh a one to compare it because this does feel like a cloned one. Right, I'm back. So this does have um printing on it. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, yeah, I think you can. So it does have the uh, TID radio. And it's called a TD771, and uh, yeah, the frequency. But I'm going to say this doesn't feel as good quality as the other two items. This is a very, very cheap. These are all over the clone. I think I paid about three pounds something for this. And to me, I'm going to say that these are pretty much the same thing. To be perfectly honest. The, the, the truth will be in the in the bottom. So the TID radio one here. If I come into the camera, let me let me just sort out the focus. Okay. So yeah, sometimes you have printing on the underside of the antenna there, giving you the UHF and VHF frequencies. So if I bring the this is the cloned version in, and yeah. Pretty much exactly the same, isn't it? I, I, you know, they look very, very similar. Very similar indeed. It looks for the longer antenna. It looks like they've just rebranded a cheap clone Nagoya antenna, which is okay. It, it is okay. It's fine. But it would have been nice if I think if they would have um, produced a slightly higher quality version as it's supposed to be of official merchandise. Now what you find with these longer antennas, and we will test this, you don't necessarily get any longer range as far as the transmit goes. They do receive better, you will, you should get a, uh, a better receive. With the cloned one, like this one, when I tested these, and I, t I bought about five or six of these, um, the only thing with these is sometimes you do get a very high SWR, could potentially damage the radio. So I'm hoping that when they rebranded this, they did actually test it to make sure it's uh, safe for the SWR. So uh, ho hopefully by getting this version, you've got a safe antenna. Here we are then, gonna do the testing. I thought I'd appear on camera because you keep asking me to. There's no reason really why I can't. So here I am. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna do the testing now. Now, a lot of you would have seen this before, but if you're new to the channel, let me just explain. Firstly, we are using the 446 frequencies, which means the radio and the antenna isn't gonna perform at its best. We're slightly off frequency. So we're gonna lose a little bit of range that way due to the SWR. Also, this place where I am, this is my usual testing, testing ground. We're only about 800 meters or so from the radio. Now, this, the receiving radio is also inside my house. Again, that's gonna affect the range. If you could get the two radios out in the open, if you were lucky enough to live in the countryside, and unfortunately I don't, then you would get obviously a lot more range. So you have to bear that in mind. Now 800 meters isn't very far, especially with this long antenna. So I've reduced the transmit power on the transmit radio here. I've reduced it down to low power. So that's around about one watt PEP power. We'll do a test here at 800 just to check things are working. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna walk up the uh, bypass there. And hopefully my aim is to get to another flyover which is just over two kilometers between the radios which is probably a fairer test i might do one on the way because i'm not sure if they'll make that range but that's the idea anyway let's do the short test here 800 meters low power yeah audio check one two three four yeah audio check one two three four one two three four audio 800 meters uh, on low power low power on the first flyover 
Okay, we've come about midpoint here. Um, I'm going to do this one just in case I can't get up on the flyover because I've never walked to the second flyover before. I've put the radio on high power, which is 10 watts according to the spec. We might get slightly less out of the antenna, so we'll do another check from here. Yeah, audio check, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, audio. Yeah, audio check, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, audio. About 1.5k now, slightly lower, slightly lower. So audio, one, two, one, two, audio. We're here. I've made it to the second flyover. Now, as this is a solo, Nobby no mates test, it's probably about the furthest that I can come out to get back to the uh, camera before the battery runs out. I looked on the map, this is about 2.25 kilometers. It's not that far. It should be fine with a high powered radio. So let's do the test from here, see if it gets back. Yeah, audio check, audio check, furthest point now. Check furthest point now, 2.25k up on the second flyover. Audio 1212 audio. Here we are, then we're back up in the radio shack. I'd love to say it's the warm radio shack, but it's not. It's, <laughs> it's really cold up here. It's late December and it's winter. Uh, what do you expect, Fred? Get on with it. Yeah, stop moaning. Fair enough. I'll do that. Right, so conclusions. I'm going to say straight away that I do accept that that wasn't probably the best test in the world. I could have gone further distance. Um, I don't know. I mean, no excuses really, but I do make these videos on my own. It is difficult to do long range testing. So yeah, 2.25k. I mean, it did it absolutely fine, really. But in saying that, I reckon the standard antenna that you get on these radios is pretty good. I'm pretty sure that would have done it absolutely fine. If you wanted to test the extra 30% range that TID say you get out of this 771, you would need to get your radios out in the open and it stretch the distance. Unfortunately, I just can't really do that on my own. Um, so I apologise for that, but it is, it, is, it is what it is. One thing that I do know, having tested these fake Nagoya antennas before with Bio Fangs, is it will improve the reception. Definitely does. You, you, you definitely get distant signals clearer. It also works surprisingly well on the air band for some reason. So if you're into that. I think ultimately though, the I suppose the payoff is the size of it. I mean, it is a big antenna. It's not quite twice as long, but it's getting that way. And it does stand out a little bit, so you might have noticed I was a little bit nervous up on that first flyover because that's very popular with people crossing the main road. And I have to wait for a gap because I get some sort of funny looks standing in the middle of the, uh, the pathway. So yeah, it does make you stand out quite a bit. That's the downside. But if you're someone that likes to go out in the open and maybe you want to try and join these PMR nets, that are all around the country apparently doing really really well haven't really picked up any round here then yeah it won't really be, be a problem and as I say the extra length will certainly improve your reception it might get you on the net or group a little bit easier and then finally there's the price and thankfully TID Radio haven't inflated the price so you're paying pretty much the same as what you'll pay for a fake Nagoya antenna but hopefully they've tested the antenna first to make sure there's no SWR issues which seems to be the case because the antenna works absolutely fine so you might as well just buy it straight from TID Radio because it's, it's only what £3.50 or something maybe a bit of postage but it's probably about a fiver so yeah cheap as chips so yeah you might as well, you might as well get one if you want to try the extra range well there you go that's the end of the video um, I hope you got something out of it I do try my best here. As uh, always, I'd like to thank you for tuning into my videos. I don't get many views per video, so I do appreciate every one of you. And I do appreciate it. There'll be a little bit of extra video on the end if you want to hang on for the end. But that's it for this one. As always, please, please, please look after each other. 
stay safe um, i'll say merry christmas to you because time this video hits the channel probably christmas will be over but i hope you had a decent christmas anyway waffling on thumbs up from Freddie and shed if you get a second just bung me a thumbs up before you go i'd appreciate it and of course i'll catch you on the next one cheers guys remember i showed this ford probe in another video but it looks like it's being used anyway because it's turned round and yeah it looks like it's getting some use so it's nice to see an old Ford like that still on the road so many would have been written off by now I still like it I still think it was a really nice shape much better than some of the cars that are being produced today because all SUVs now I think that was a classic shape these are quite cool these post box toppers people people put these on top of post boxes here in the UK just before Christmas I believe it is a charity yeah I believe there is a donation thing there if you want to donate but they don't really do it for charity I think it's very uh, very inventive a lot of work went into that Yeah, very cool.